Alrighty guys, this is lesson 10.2 for academic challenge pre-calculus. So we're going to talk about circles and ellipses. So a circle, I think we already know that concept. So we're not really representing this one much different than you've learned it. H and K would be representative of your center. Obviously if H and K were zero, then it would just be a circle centered at the origin. So we'll just look at this quick example problem, and then we're going to move right into ellipsis because it's really nothing new. So um, we have an equation given to us, and we have to figure out, well, what's the center, what's the radius, and how are we going to graph it? So the first thing we're going to do is rearrange it. So see how we're grouping x's together, y's together, because we're going to have to complete the square. So remember how I taught you last year the little boxes? There's one, there's one. Kind of leave that open space because we're going to have to determine what numbers are going to go in there. So here we have 16x. So remember, you divide it by 2, square it. So it would be 8 and then squared would give you 64. And the 64 would be added to the other side as well. We have to do everything on one side that we did on the other. Here you divide by 2, you get 7. Square it, you get 49. So we're also adding 49. And then we factor, remember this is going to become a perfect square, so back to that original number, 16 divided by 2 gave us 8, and then um, seven div or 14 divided by 2 gave us 7, so it takes us right back there, and then we just combine the right hand side and that gives us 81. So what is this saying? It's saying it's a circle with radius um, 9, because the square root of 81 is 9, and then our center would be at positive 8, negative 7. Remember, you always change the sign. So we have our center and our radius. And sorry, there actually is not a graph on the PowerPoint. But I think we know how to do it. Um, we would just go ahead, plot your center, and then count 9 up, 9 down, 9 over, and 9 across from that center. And that will give you a pretty good picture of the circle. You know how much I'm a coffee lover. I was just sipping my coffee. So, on to the ellipse. This is going to be a little different. So, for your little fill in the blanks, even though you don't truly have copies of these notes now, an ellipse is a set of all points in the plane, and then the sum of whose distance. This is kind of the formal definition, so don't worry too much about this. You're going to have these things called the foci, and or foci. I can't remember. We had an argument last semester. I think it ended up being foci that they are, so that's what we'll call them. But, um... These things called the foci, you kind of think of the focus of the parabola, but it's going to be these two little points inside. And the other thing you have to think about is the, so we have two axes on a ellipse. We have a major and a minor axis. And the major axis is the longer one, and the minor axis is the shorter one. So obviously if it was a circle, it just has a radius because it's the same all the way around. But think about squishing the circle, now we have a longer radius, so to say, or distance across, and a shorter one. So it'll be your major axis, major axis, and your minor axis. So the foci are always going to fall on the major axis, and there's formulas to represent all of them. So our major, so if the major axis is horizontal, meaning the longer axis falls on along x or in the horizontal direction, here's how we're going to represent our ellipse. So it'd be x squared plus y squared, so it's similar to a circle, but um, your x would be divided by a, your y or a squared, your y squared would be divided by b squared, and this would be if a is greater than b, which obviously would be greater than zero. So if you look at the picture, what a is representing is actually the distance from the origin or the center of the ellipse if it's shifted out to the um, out to the I wanted to say y-intercept, but it's truly the x-intercept or vertices. So your vertices are going to be whatever points it reaches on the major axis. And then you would also find your y-intercepts or your x-intercepts, depending on the orientation, because that's going to also tell you about the ellipse that you're dealing with. So your vertices for the horizontal one would be negative a and positive a. So it's that distance from the origin or center out to your vertices. Um, and that's also under the X, and then your Y intercepts would be falling on the Y with respect to the B, that number that's under Y squared. Then your foci are given by an equation that is very similar to your Pythagorean theorem. So it's C squared equals A squared minus B squared. 
So if you're given some of the pieces, you can find the rest, just like in most of these math problems that we have. If we flip it, now the major axis is along y. Now you can see the important part of this is noticing that the a squared, the a is always going to be the larger value. So the way you can determine which way these are going to be flipped is noting which number is larger. Is the number under x larger or the number under y larger? Here we have the number under y is larger, so, or because a is always going to be bigger than b in this case. So our vertices would fall along the y-axis, and our x-intercepts would fall along the x-axis. The foci will still be represented by the same equation. The only difference is, notice they're falling here on negative c and pot, or zero negative c, zero positive c, so they're falling on the y-axis opposed to the x, because they always are going to go with your major axis. So we're going to find the standard equation of the ellipse. We're given vertices and foci. So be careful. You're going to be given different pieces depending on the problem. So if we're given vertices and foci, and we know that the standard equation requires an A and B, and all we're given is an A and C, we obviously need to find B. So we're going to use that equation. We're going to plug in our C squared. So remember, C is represented by the foci, so that's going to be... 3 squared equals 5 squared minus b squared. So once we do that and we solve for b, we get b is equal to 6, or b squared is equal to 16. So that means that b equals 4. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because we're just plugging it into the standard formula. It will matter when you're graphing, but it does not matter here yet. So it's x squared over 25 because note 25 is the vertice squared because that's giving our a value. So we have x squared over 25 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. Also notice that we knew to put it over or the 25 under the x because we are given the vertices and since the vertice value is along x, that's showing us that our major axis falls on x. <coughs> Excuse me. So then we graph it. You can see how it's crossing through 5, negative 5 on the x-axis, 4, negative 4 on the y, centered at the origin. So uh, for the ellipse, 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 36. Find the vertices of foci and then graph. So, um, sorry, this looks like it actually jumped ahead. Um, so what we would have to do is divide through by um, 4 and 9. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I, let me step back. Some of these are hard. It's hard to go backwards when you look at some of these PowerPoints, so I apologize. What we're doing is we're taking this equation, 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 36. We're dividing the whole thing through by 36, because remember, it has to equal 1. When we divide the whole thing through by 36, we're left with 4, because 9 into 36 is 4, and 4 into 36 is 9, so now we have that, and now we have the standard form of the equation. So from that, we can pull the vertices, so our vertices are going to be, two, um, for the major axis, would be actually down here. This is listed a little different. I, the, I'll have to switch it up in the PowerPoint. Sorry about that. So your major axis is going to fall with respect to y. So y square or a squared is equal to 9, so that means a is equal to 3. So this is going to be our major axis. This is going to be our minor axis, and the 2 comes from the 4. So to find the foci, we're going to do c squared equals b, a squared minus b squared. So we have 3 squared minus 2 squared, and that gives us square root 5. So here's our two foci. And when we draw the graph, we get this. You can see that major axis falls on y, minor axis falls on x. And the foci, we're not really graphing. I mean, square root of 5, we know that's somewhere between 2 and 3. So it makes sense because it's falling somewhere along here and somewhere along there, if you can see where my mouse is. So um, then what happens, once again, if it shifts, we're just going to have a nice little completing the square problem. <laughs> okay, so I can give you all the formals of what happens. Here's our H and K, so that's going to be contingent on what's with X and what's with Y. Format is still the same. Your vertices are going to be given if, it's, um, if the major axis falls on the horizontal, 
then you would be adding and subtracting the a value from h. Likewise, you would find where your, I, you know, it's not really included in these, but I like to call them the minor vertices. So they would be, they're not really y-intercepts anymore, but we still kind of need to know how far up and down it's going. And even though it's not necessarily in the equations we're given to find those minor vertices, that's where we would hold the h steady and then add and subtract them from k. So you see that here, length of the minor axis is 2b. Okay, so that's kind of confusing. What that means is it's just this length here is this times 2, which we kind of already knew, but I, I like to think about those vertices here and here. You don't have to, but it's probably a good thing to know for when you're drawing the graphs. And then your foci would fall with respect to x, so we'd be or adding and subtracting c from the h value and the k would remain constant. We're still using the same c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Vertical, same thing as before. The a is just going to fall under y. Our vertices, we're going to be adding and subtracting that a value from k now to find the quote-unquote minor vertices. We would add and subtract b from h or we would recognize that still that length of the minor axes would be 2b. The foci would then, that c value, find it the same way, but we're adding and subtracting from k opposed to h, and h is holding steady. So let's find the center vertices and foci and then draw the graph. So we're going to take this thing, split it up, put y's and x's together, separate them, complete the square. Now remember, we got a little bit of an issue there. We got to factor that 4 out from the x's, okay? Doesn't change much. We're still going to divide 6 by 2, square it, and that's going to give us 9. And, and divide 2 by 2, that gives us 1. 1 square gives us 1. Just remember that 36 over here, where did that come from? Remember, you have your 9 here, but we factored out a 4. So what did we truly add on that side? We added 9 times 4, or 36. So that's why we're adding the 36 to the other side, opposed to just the 9. So we, we create our perfect square. That 4 is still going to stay out there. x plus 3, y minus 1, and that all equals 16. So remember, to get it in the format for the ellipse, we have to divide through by 16. So when we do that, we have 4 left over here. We have 16 here because we didn't even have a constant. We just had 1 with the y minus 1. So we can see that this is going to be... Um, the major axis will fall with respect to the vertical. So moving on, we have a center of negative 3, positive 1. We have vertices. The x is going to hold steady, and the y is going to add that a value. So your a value is, is square root of 16, or 4. So we're adding that to 1. So we add 4 to 1, it gives us 5. We subtract 4 from 1, it gives us negative 3. And we would do that same thing for the... Minor axis vertices is probably not on here, but I'll just say it. Your 1 would hold steady, and then this 3 we would add 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. So we would have negative 1, and we'd subtract 2, so we'd have negative 5 for those two values. But you'll see it on the graph as well. To find the C, we just plug in our values. So we're going to have 4 squared minus 2 squared, or A squared minus B squared. That gives us square root of 12. And then we're going to draw our graph. So draw the center. Like I said before, sometimes it's easier to draw the graph, start at the center, and then work away from it so you know that it's going to go four up and four down from the center. So draw that, visualize it. You know, it's going to go two to the right, two to the left from the center, draw that. Sometimes it's just easier to not make mistakes that way. So you can have that option too. And then um, this is just some applications, and you can kind of see why understanding ellipses is important. Hopefully you realize that the orbit is an ellipse, but if not, there you have it. So um, that is it for the lectures for this week, and um, I will probably continue to do these in YouTube format, and we will see you guys for next week's lecture. I'll be posting hopefully tomorrow with um, the 10.3 lecture in the same format. So um, we'll see you guys later. Have a good night.